Hi, my name is Dan Fletcher. I'm a professor of bioengineering and biophysics at UC Berkeley. And my lab works on the cytoskeleton. Uh, we're interested in how forces sculpt cellular organization and behavior. Um, but a little over a year ago, I wasn't doing that. I was uh, taking uh, some time to work at the White House. Uh, very different experience from, from working in lab. And I went to Washington, D.C. out of an interest in understanding why the taxpayers are paying us to do research how public policy makers are using the information that we are generating, and what is there that we can do to improve that, that process. Uh, and so uh, it turned out to be a tremendous experience. I thoroughly enjoyed the time there, uh, but it's great to be uh, back and in a research lab. Part of the reason I enjoyed it is it exposed me to very different people and very different experiences than I have during my normal career. Most of us um, haven't really been outside of academia, if you've been in academia. It, as a result, you don't really get a chance to understand uh, some of what motivates uh, different parts of the country. And so this was a chance to get a little bit of a perspective on that broad set of people. Um, so I wanted to uh, talk about a few of the experiences that I had in DC, uh, but also try and identify a few thoughts on how to be effective um, in communicating uh, research ideas, which is a, a, a central role for scientists in Washington, D.C. So uh, Washington, D.C. Is a, is a whole new world, uh, very different from Berkeley, where I live, uh, and very different from most academic environments. Uh, it's a very formal place. Uh, I had to wear a suit and tie every day. Um, I had to uh, 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 go to meetings um, on time. Uh, it was a, a very unique experience. Um, I was even told to get a haircut, um, uh, and that was by Carl Rove and Matt, um, and I didn't get a haircut. Uh, but it taught you lots of things about um, how people organize and how people decide what policies are worthwhile. There's not an experiment you can do to decide that policy. It comes from conversations, from interactions. And that's why cocktail parties in Washington, D.C. are so important. They're like our conferences. There's no poster. Uh, exhibit, but there is a chance to exchange information. Um, so what does a scientist do in Washington, D.C.? Well, my goal in part was to be a link to research labs, active research labs that uh, are producing this information that the taxpayers are paying for, um, and to provide some insight um, on how that process works and hopefully some specific knowledge that would be useful in policy, uh, policy decisions. Um, I came to Washington, D.C. as part of a program called the White House Fellows Program, and it's a program that's been around since about 1965, um, and it brings early career professionals from a wide variety of disciplines uh, to Washington, D.C. for uh, an experience there. Uh, and my class of fellows was uh, a group of 14 people, and a fantastic and varied uh, group of people, uh, including doctors and lawyers and business people and people from the military. A fabulous experience and uh, a wonderful group of people. Um, so about half of my time in Washington, D.C. was spent working with this group of people. And we uh, uh, met with over 100 different uh, speakers over the course of the time there, including uh, president, the vice president, uh, uh, various cabinet secretaries, and other uh, influential people, such as uh, columnists and um, uh, uh, activists. And so uh, in those meetings, we got a chance to discuss a wide variety of is issues, and it was a very educational process. The other half of my time was spent at the White House Office of Science and Technology Policy, working together with the science advisor, um, as well as a variety of other people in that office. And we worked on issues that ranged from life sciences to biosecurity to health technology. Um, and each day, more issues would be coming in, or you would be trying to push um, other topics forward. And many of the decisions that needed to be made were, what do we do next? What is the right role for the government in a particular topic? Whether it's stem cell research or uh, the requirement for certain health information to be made available. Um, one thing I observed right away was that Washington, D.C. is a very busy place, a very fast-paced environment. There's not a lot of time for contemplation. Uh, things happen very quickly and people work very hard. So I have a great deal of respect for the, the civil servants who form the core of, of the government. Um, so in this process that is so fast-paced, what is the role for science? So 
it was really uh, exciting to see that everywhere I went and the people I talked with, science is something that is broadly supported. Uh, Democrats, Republicans, the White House, the Congress, uh, science is seen as a real key to addressing national problems and national priorities. And so that was wonderful to see. What was less clear was how is the information that we're producing getting into these environments? Uh, it's to some extent through advisory councils, uh, to some extent through news stories, um, but there weren't direct routes to figure out what does the future look like? And that um, uh, that's, was surprising to me. It was also surprising and maybe a little disheartening to realize that science is not the answer. Uh, that is, uh, science doesn't address a, 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 science, a policy issue completely. It provides a lot of the background information, but at some point, someone has to be a decision maker. Someone has to say, this is how we're going to do it, not this way. And many times that's a value judgment. That's not a scientific judgment. And as a result, science is playing a role up to a point. And after that, it's, uh, it's a balancing of various interests. And balancing those interests is the great challenge of any system of, of government. And uh, getting a perspective on where science plays a role was, was a, a, a very rewarding part of this experience. So um, this brings me to maybe the main point, and that is um, how can we as scientists be effective in Washington, D.C.? What is our role? And I think there are five things that we can, that we can do. Um, one is we need to play a role in synthesizing ideas. We are all experts in specific areas, uh, but those specific areas and that particular topic is only going to be part of uh, a solution. And so if we can play a role in synthesizing what we do together with what other people do to come up with solutions, uh, that's going to be much more effective than, than just uh, describing the work that we're doing individually. So being able to synthesize, being a little broad, is very important in being effective in, in Washington, D.C. Second is recognizing the diversity of interests. People come to Washington, D.C. with lots of different uh, pulls on them. And understanding who's in favor of an idea, who's against an idea, is a critical part of moving a topic forward. Uh, third, and something I didn't realize until a few months into this program, was that famous people are just people. Uh, even if you're sitting in the Oval Office or having lunch with Colin Powell, these are, these are people, they've done amazing things, but they benefit from the same sort of hard questions, uh, the same ser sort of uh, uh, critical assessment that we do in improving ourselves and our work. And so um, uh, uh, I think that's an important thing to remember when you're interacting with government officials is they adhere to the same rules of logic that, that we do. Um, fourth is come with uh, solutions, not just with problems. Uh, the most effective way to make progress in Washington, D.C. is to have a solution. And if you simply point out uh, a problem with the way funding is done or the lack of funding in a particular area, that's not a solution. There are lots of problems the government deals with. It's much more exciting and much more productive to come with a solution, how to move forward on that topic. And lastly, maybe most importantly, is that we as scientists have a perspective on where our fields are going. And that's the vision we need to share with the policymakers in Washington, D.C. We have ideas, uh, we have a perspective that they aren't going to have the time or the ability to, to have. And we need to come up with ways of sharing that perspective. And a quote I like that relates to this is one uh, piece of advice given to Wayne Gretzky, the, the ice hockey player. Uh, when he was told to uh, not skate to where the puck is, but skate to where the puck is going to be. And I think that's the big challenge in, in government, uh, devising policies that are going to be appropriate for where the world's going to be in 10, uh, 20 years. And we're the ones who have a, an idea of where science is going to be in that amount of time. So we need to play a role in conveying that idea. So it was a wonderful experience to be in D.C., uh, but I'm uh, wonderfully happy to be uh, back in Berkeley, back in lab, and uh, uh, enjoying the West Coast. Thank you.